Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these colourful black hole space scenes with EV in Blender 2.8. To make them, we'll be using a combination of techniques, such as my previously shown method for creating volumetric nebulas, as well as a technique provided by 3D Sing VFX for getting an accretion disk around a black hole in EV. We'll start from a basic scene with no lights and one camera. First of all, we're going to create a basic cube to contain our nebula, and scale it up to 100 on each axis. Then we'll create a new material for the cube and give it the following nodes. This is just a simple nebula that I've shown off in an older video, it will help to give us this painterly effect in the final render. You won't see anything to start with after adding these nodes because there are no light objects in the scene. So let's create a point light and increase the power value to 10,000. If you are zoomed in enough, you will see the light reacting with the volume. You can also change the colour of the light to whatever you want. Now is a good time to create a camera and set it up in a position where we can see some of the nebula being lit up. We can also play with the focal length to adjust how much we can see from this distance. And next we're going to place down the black hole. You can download the black hole resource file from 3 Sing and copy it over to your new file. I also recommend watching their breakdown of the effect and checking out the other content on their channel. But in the free resources that accompany this video, I've made some adjustments to the effect and parented the objects together to make it easier to copy over. What I'm going to do is open up one of my demo files, find the black hole collection in the outliner, right click and then choose copy. Then I'm going to go to the outliner in my new file, right click and choose paste. Then I'm going to move the selection to the cursor in the 3D view with Shift S. If the accretion disk is separated into different smaller rings after pasting, then you might need to adjust the rotation of the disk rotator object. Now that we've got that placed down, let's take a quick look at how it works and what we can do to change the look of the effect. If you click on the black hole object and then go to the object material shader nodes, you'll see that it's making use of the glass BSDF shader. This is where the refraction effect comes from. Those of you who are familiar with Gleb Alexandrov might remember they did a tutorial on how to get a black hole effect that also made use of refraction. This tutorial also coincided with their Space VFX Elements course which I highly recommend. The index of refraction value, otherwise known as the IOR value, is primarily controlled by this colour ramp. If we move the black handle back and forth, you can see how we can control the tightness of this lensing effect. So if you want, you can get a smaller black hole with a larger accretion disk by moving it further to the left. If you click on the disk object, which is the child of the black hole, then you can see the material nodes are a bit more complex. The generated noise textures and colour ramps are responsible for creating the colour patterns and deviations across the surface of the accretion disk. You could individually change the colour of all the handles, but that would be a lot of effort. An easy way to alter the colour is with the hue saturation node. You can hold shift and scrub the hue value to slowly move it to any colour you want. Keeping with the blue colour palette for this example scene, I'm going to choose a value of 0.15. Now one of the most interesting behaviours of black holes is their ability to bend light that's coming from behind them. Unfortunately, our surrounding nebula in the 3D space is not picked up and used by the refraction. However, everything we make for the world background using the world shader nodes will be. That means anything like stars and other nebula content that's stuck to the skybox can be used to add extra detail to the horizon of the black hole. So what we'll do now is add some of that detail. We can recycle nebula nodes from earlier to get a kind of paint stroke effect over the background. To do this, we'll select our original nebula cube object, then select all the object material nodes and copy them with Ctrl C. Then we'll go into the world nodes and paste them in here. We won't need the material output or principled volume nodes, so you can delete those now. From here, we'll create a background node and plug the color output of the hue saturation node into the color input of the background node. Then plug the background into the world output node. If you look at the horizon of the black hole, you may see a wispy effect appear. If you zoom out quite far away from the nebula cube, you can see the nodes have plastered this pattern all over the background. Since the colour of this is controlled by nodes rather than the scene lighting, we will need to change the colour manually by altering the colour of the handles. So again, I'm going to go with something that fits the blue palette. You can always go back and select the nebula cube again to adjust the density of the volume by changing the brightness of the handles. It might be worth rotating the black hole to emphasise the distortion of the accretion disk mixed in with the surroundings. You can roll the rotation of an object by pressing the R key twice while it's selected. What I'm going to do now is go back to the world background nodes and add in some stars. We'll create a Voronoi texture node and increase the scale to 200, then plug in a color ramp node, then flip the handles and adjust them so that there's only a tiny space of white on the left side. Then we'll plug the color ramp into a background node, and plug both background nodes into a mixed shader node before passing it onto the world output. Once the shaders have calculated, if you zoom in you should see some stars in the background. We can increase the strength of them by increasing the strength value on the appropriate background node. I'll make it something like 3, it's just strong enough that we can see it around the horizon of the black hole, but not so strong that it looks out of place. Remember you can make any adjustments to the position and rotation of the 3D nebula to frame the artwork in a better way. 
Another thing we can do is increase the brightness of the accretion disk. If you go back to the disk object under the black hole, in the object material nodes you can find the emission node. This will control the overall emission strength of the accretion disk. You can combine this with the Bloom post-processing effect in EV to get some nice visuals. I'll increase the intensity to 0.5 and the radius to 7. What you do from here is up to you. Make any adjustments you want to make it into an artwork that's personal to you. In the case of this demonstration file, I started adding some abstract shapes to make it more interesting. Don't forget to download the free resources from the link in the description so you don't have to put everything together yourself. Also, make sure to go over to 3D Sing's channel to see a breakdown of their black hole accretion disk effect. Don't forget to tag me in your artwork because I love seeing what you make. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell. Remember you can also follow me on my social media channels or join our Discord server to keep up to date with content. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.